Welcome everyone. My name is James Hunt, a principal consultant with Contigix. As a Platinum Atlassian Solution Partner, we routinely work with organizations and teams to develop and implement their DevOps lifecycle pipelines throughout their organization. For this demonstration, we're gonna be showing you how you can get started in this process and specifically in using the Atlassian tool suite. We're gonna be going over how you can do some planning and of course, collaboration between your teams and how we can streamline that entire process and bring it all together. We're gonna be looking at doing a little bit of building and integration and how we bring that once again with our teams and we are able to have live updates and how the, our teams are progressing throughout the entire process. And then our third agenda for, for this demonstration is that observation and receiving feedback on our application. Now keep in mind, this demonstration will have a bit of software development centric focus, but always keep in mind that this can be applied to any of our teams, whether it be change management, that can go through a DevOps lifecycle as well. Also your uh, human resources, your financial groups, pretty much anything that can have a project management um, type of style or any type of collaboration this works great with. Now, throughout this demonstration, we are going to be going through the traditional DevOps lifecycle pipeline. We're going to be starting this journey using Jira software, where we're going to be showing you how we can keep our planned information organized and how we can create our new plans before we have to invest too much time into, into building our, our product or even progressing with our, our change control management process. Throughout the planning and building phases, it's so important that we do collaboration and communication. And we're gonna be demonstrating how we can leverage some automation to create some documentation within Confluence. Confluence is a great application in order to be able to do live synchronous edits within our team with a large number of members collaborating at the same time on a single document. And these documents are intended to be live documents so they can be updated throughout the entire process. After Confluence, we're gonna be shifting back over to Jira software with a little bit of Bitbucket. Through our building and our continuous integration and, de and deployment phases, we're gonna be seeing how we can get live status information revealed into our Jira issue so that our teams can be fully aware in real time the status of our development. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up with some monitoring and some, some operations, uh, briefly showing you Ops Genie and Status Page, which are great resources to have if you have a public facing application. We're going to be looking in, in depth into Jira service management, as that's where our service teams are actually going to be sitting, where they will be receiving that continuous feedback from our end users, uh, receiving those outage reports and whatnot. And then they'll also be enabled to transition like a bug report to our software development teams through a planning phase. And that's gonna create our internal, our, our entire uh, loop of our DevOps lifecycle pipeline. So let's see how this looks in practice. All right, so welcome to Jira software, here we are. This is in our planning phase. And so we've got all of these Jira issues in front of us. We've, you can see we have some in our backlog, there's some that are selected for development, there's some that are in progress and some work that's already been completed. Now, as you may notice, this is a Kanban board. But one of the really nice things about Jira software is that we can easily have more than one board to present a different lens of view in our project while we're planning everything. We can easily do the drop down over here to the side and shift to our scrum board because we could actually have more than one team that is collaborating on a single Jira project. We may have one team that is more software development centric and they're working on a two week scrum cycle while we might have some system engineers or finance or some HR teams that are also working with this development team and they're gonna be working from our Kanban board which is more release and version driven and it's more of a, what, when do we wanna get this certain thing done? All right, so let's dig into one of these cards right here. Let's look at our team dev one. So as you can see, we've got some default text here and we can quickly review the information presented before us. With this side panel, we can access all of the fields that we need to and update them on the fly as we needed. But if we wanna really dig in deeper into the Jira issue itself, we can click on the link 
and it takes us to the full view of the issue. Here we can collaborate more, it's easy to make some comments, but we get a more in-depth view of what we wanna plan. We can be very verbose in this. Now, as you see down here in these issue links, we've got something you might not have seen before called link documentation. Using a marketplace app, we were actually able to add on a little bit of automation in order to automatically create documents within Confluence so that we can collaborate on these things. So let's go ahead and click on that and see what it looks like. So what we have here, we created a bug template just as for demonstration where we have the standard symptoms, cause, workaround, and resolution. And you may notice some, some of the data that actually came from the JIRA issue in itself. The JIRA issue description we placed as a default into the symptoms area. And on the right, we have a, a, what's called a page properties table that brings in the JIRA issue ID, the creation time that it was initially reported, and then data from our impact field, because it's very important to have that information in our document. Within this document, we can collaborate with more than one members of our team. And we can determine, we can do brainstorming, we can just come up with all these great ideas before we actually commit to developing code or making that change management process. Now, if we go up one level in Confluence, this is what's called a page properties report. Here we can quick, quickly aggregate all of those bug reports or meeting notes or agile planning, really whatever document we wanna track with those page properties, we can roll it up to a report at a higher level to where we can easily sort by the title. In this case, we could sort by the impact that your issues applied to, or even when it was reported. All right, so if we look back over to our DevOps lifecycle, we've touched bases on a little bit of Jira software, how we do the planning and we jumped into Confluence. Now let's go check out the build and continuous integration and deployment loops. And let's see how that actually gets reflected into Jira software. Now we did some pre-staging of some development on our own just for the sake of time. And if we go down here to the bottom right, there's a development panel that brings in all of our commits, all of our builds, all of our pull requests, everything from the Git repository we can review at this one spot. We can even create a branch from our Jira issue into our code repository. So that way we can actually have end-to-end -end tracking between all of our integrated systems. And this development panel, it updates live. So as a new commit is made, it'll actually increment up to another one. If a pull request is added while we're actually viewing the JIRA issue, it'll show up in the same panel. So at Ops Genie is designed more for like the who's on call, your teams, your 24 seven or um, your out of hour support teams. This is one way that you can use to alert those who need to be alerted quickly whenever something is wrong. Now you see before you right now, and just one of, we've got an old alert in here, like the site went down and it has information it's like, where did it come from? Uh, we actually use the default API in order, uh, in order to trigger this. And it has just information for us. Now we could also, automatically alert our on-call team using a scheduler of who needs to respond to this. And then they would be alerted and that they could come in and get more information in order to determine if they actually need to go on site or not. We jump over to status page. Status page pairs up very nice with Ops Genie and Jira, and more specifically also Jira Service Management. And that is because it is a way to notify your end users, your stakeholders, that there's been an incident that has occurred. Now, we're more looking for system outage incidences, not um, security instances. Just wanna make sure we're clear on that. So you can see in front of you, it's like there's an example incident. We can click on that to kind of get an idea. Um, it has all of our metadata of like the incident histories, like when it was uh, resolved, it was at a monitoring phase, been identifying and investigating. So this is a way you can actually automate the notifications and track your outages very sequentially and very methodically, right? And then another really cool feature of this is you can take all of that incident history and then you can start working on a post-mortem. You can do it right here in the tool itself. You can develop almost like a blog, a live document of your post-mortem right here in the tool. All right, you'll notice this view is significantly different than from our Jira software view. That's because ITSM and support teams, they work differently. They need to be made aware of what issues have been reported, right? 
Uh, is there a service level agreement that we need to prioritize something? Uh, do we need something as a higher priority? Do we need to focus on what is unassigned? How do we get all of these, this, these reported issues resolved as fast as we can? So one of the great things about Jira Service Management, it has a feature called queues. These queues on the left are all based on the Jira query language filters, and we can modify them as, we, as the team needs them modified. For this one right here, notice the list is significantly shorter. It focuses on in incidences. This is something that would actually get reported to our ops genie or to our status page. So this is where we can bring it back around to our support teams to actually implement a JIRA issue and track it all down. And whenever we click on these, notice now we're viewing our previous JIRA software view that we had again with the standard JIRA issue view. All right, so now I mentioned with our continuous feedback, there's this thing called the JIRA Service Management Help Center. Let's check that out. As you can see here, we've got groups on the left. We've got request forms on the right. We have a great search field that we can use to actually, when we type in there, it's very similar to other search engines, except for this one searches specifically our Confluence documentation. And this is why it's very important to have that ease of use of, use of collaboration throughout our entire DevOps lifecycle so that our teams can continually keep our documentation updated. And that way, when an end user wants to report on a new feature or a bug that they've identified, or they just need general help, then they can easily find a, a solution to that. So we type in bug. Notice in here suggested articles, we've got some bug reports and we've got work items, or the, the, the practice or the demonstration pages that we created. But then also it says, well, if this doesn't help you, then you can click on the application bug request type. And here we're able to actually translate the, the highly technical, sometimes the JIRA issues get highly technical custom field names, but using this, we can actually translate those names to something that the end user would understand. On this form specifically, we've got application affected and we can type in our active directory. Yep, there you go. Uh, but they don't realize that this field is actually called components within our JIRA service project. Uh, we can be very inquisitive. So instead of saying impact level, we can actually ask them what is the level of impact that this has on the application? And we can pick what it is. They can type in a summary, their observed behavior. If they have any workarounds they've developed themselves, because it's very important to get that feedback from our end user. And then finally, it's always a good idea to be able to offer that ability to add an attachment of a screenshot or maybe a log that they themselves have. And whenever they submit all of this, it actually goes up to the request view where they actually have a portal where they can view all of their open requests. And once again, to make sure that this is a continuous feedback loop, they even have the opportunity to create a request from this view. Now you can also view ones that are created by yourself or any of them that have been shared with you. All you have to do is just change the filter to where I'm a participant. So those are the ones where my teammate submitted a ticket and then they, wanted, they want me to be in a participant in that. So then they went ahead and shared it with me. And finally, we've got any request type that we can have. All right. Okay, the last thing we need to do is demonstrate how to con connect this continuous feedback to our planning cycle, right? All right, so let's go ahead and let's go back to our team HD 31. It's a great one we can pick. We can easily select more create a linked issue. This is how we're going to actually create another issue for our software development team in order to, to track. And then it's going to be a bug and it pulls down information from the source Jira issue. And then we hit create. And now it's gonna show up on our software development or our configuration control boards um, Jira project, right? So that now we have that fully integrated uh, DevOps solution using Jira. Okay, so that wraps us up for the demonstration. I'd like to thank you very much for taking this opportunity to um, go through your DevOps lifecycle. Thank you and enjoy.